and welcome back. If you've been a regular follower of this show, you know we've talked a lot about police reform during this General Assembly, but there actually was other legislation that the General Assembly had passed, which was a bevy of bills, including legal gambling on sports, pandemic financial relief, election law changes, but the most interesting of them all is the authorization for counties to gain control. And of course, some would say flexibility and setting rates for local income taxes, including allowing for graduated rates for different income levels. Mark, as to this expansion in local control of taxes, is this, isn't this just a license for local governments to raise taxes willy-nilly as they see fit? Um, as I read that, no, um, that the top cap that a county can, can um, impose is set at 3.2%, uh, which is the rate that two thirds of the population of Maryland are under. Uh, so in fact, what this would permit, now to be sure, Anne Arundel County had wanted, to, at, at some point wanted to, uh, Pittman wanted to authority to raise it beyond that, but that's not what was done. Uh, so potentially, if you're stuck at 3.2, some jurisdictions, oh, say Talbot County or Kent County, small counties, uh, could decide to reduce taxes. And part of what the bill does is it, uh, there were some complicated formulas that effectively penalized counties that reduce taxes uh, to reduce tax without penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Reduce taxes. Sure. Do you? <laughs> nobody believes that. Come on. <laughs> no, go, no local government reduces taxes. This is just the camel's nose under the tent, Mark. They're, it's, it's in, in my, hopefully in my lifetime, they'll, they'll be raising taxes <laughs> precipitously. Well, they, but they did set up the, the minimum tax was raised to 2.6. So the, the level of flexibility is not, not as great, right. but you're right. All right. All right. Uh, I, I guess I'm just a, a skeptic here. So, Ron, one of the other big changes was legalized sports gambling. Is that a good idea? Don't we have enough gambling in the county and the state already? Well, you know, I think it's like everything else. You know, when the government sees an opportunity to harness the power of something that's already taken off, if, if there's a way to uh, help benefit the populace at large, then it's worth pursuing. You know, I think, you know, sports betting has been going on, you know, for hundreds of years. Um, to the extent that making it legal will allow us to increase the coffers um, through taxation and, and other surcharges, I say, you know, why not give it a shot, especially coming out of the pandemic? You know, everybody needs relief. And it, those who have it and, and want to bet, you know, want to help the, the little guy next to who doesn't have it, I say go for it. Well, I'm I'm the world's worst gambler, um, and I, so I you know I'm, I I wouldn't. <laughs> they they <laughs> love you at the casino. They love though. me at yeah. They, well, no, they, they never see me at the casino. Believe me, uh, I know better than that. But you know, um, Mark, one of the changes talk, talking about casinos is the change in the voting laws, which allows for an opt-in for a permanent vote by mail. Is this a good idea? Well, I, I wish that if they were going to do that, they ought to have adopted one of the provisions that uh, the Georgia law that everybody uh, is so controversial, which is to get rid of the, on, on uh, mail-in ballots, get rid of the signature match, which as our signatures change over time is a really problematic approach. And what Georgia did is switch that to a digit, either it's the social security, last four digit social security or an identifier from the driver's license which is a much better system than matching signatures. Uh, and I think it's a good provision from Georgia and is something that Maryland ought to adopt for mail-in ballots. But the, the idea of a permanent uh, opt-in for, for, for a mail-in voting list, does that make sense? It's really not that different. You can sign up for absentee already. Uh, so that, I, 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 I mean, I've read that and it, it's not all that different from the current law, which allows for people to sign up to regularly get absentee ballots. Oh, I, I, I know now that absentee is no longer the term and it's mail-in ballots, but that was the process before. Okay. All right. Well, all right. I, I guess, um, the, given the controversy of the last 
last two elections sure. over mail in mail in well, balloting. And, and absolutely, and, and and that's why signature matching was dropped in in a number of states, and that has been a source of great controversy. There are better ways to authenticate ballots, and that's what we ought to be doing. Okay. So, Ron, there was a very popular program that passed, and, and that was the expansion of mental health services, named in honor of Thomas Raskin, the, the late son of Congressman Jamie Raskin. What, what exactly uh, does that bill do in terms of additional services? Well, it's, it's designed to have the Maryland Department of Health create a 211 opt in service for those who choose uh, to opt in. And what I would like to refer to as a, a preemptive bridge uh, that would allow or permit um, phone calls or text messages to those who opt into the service to make sure that folks are doing okay and that, you know, if there are needs that they're being met. Uh, I think that as we've seen, you know, throughout this pandemic, um, mental health crises um, are, you know, they're becoming more prevalent, more extreme, um, more publicly demonstrated. So we need to figure out a way um, to help people recognize that it's okay to have these challenges and to let them know that there is help available for them and that, you know, the government, whether local, state, or federal, wants to see people find their way clear um, to whatever remedy is going to have them be able to live a happy and productive life. You know, I think this is a fantastic effort and it's much needed, again, especially after this pandemic. Yeah, I, I, just as we were coming onto the air, air to, uh, this afternoon, I saw a, a headline from uh, Bethesda Beat magazine about concerning the number of opioid deaths that have occurred uh, in the past year. And the increase was something like 60% increase yeah. over 2019, which just, again, uh, demonstrates the need for, for not only mental health uh, opportunities, but also drug abuse opportunities. Uh, and I think that's the unseen factor that we discounted during the, the pandemic is the, 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 the health that we all have and that we've all suffered. So it's a ter terrible thing. Uh, and hopefully this, uh, this bill will uh, give some solace to people who are in need.